Welcome to the video book summary of Getting Things Done, The Art of Stress-Free Productivity by David Allen. This book was published in 2001 and weighing in at 288 pages. In today's world, yesterday's methods just don't work. Allen's premise is simple. Our productivity is directly proportional to our ability to relax. Only when our minds are clear and our thoughts are organized can we achieve effective productivity and unleash our creative potential. From core principles to proven tricks, getting things done can transform the way you work, showing you how to pick up the pace without wearing yourself down. If you like what you hear in the book summary, I strongly suggest you buy the book using the link in the description. So without further ado, I bring you the book summary of Getting Things Done. The book in three sentences. If you don't appropriately manage the open loops in our life, our attention will get pulled. Overwhelm comes from not clarifying what your intended outcome is, not deciding what the very next action is, and not reminding yourself on your intended outcome and action. And three, you need to transform all the stuff you attract and accumulate into a clear inventory of meaningful actions, projects, and usable information. The five big ideas. Number one, getting things done requires defining what done means and what doing looks like. Two, mastering your workflow involves capturing what has your attention, clarifying what it means, putting it where it belongs, and reviewing it frequently and engaging with it. Three, if an action will take less than two minutes, it should be done at the moment it is defined. Four, Anxiety and guilt don't come from having too much to do. It comes from breaking your agreements with yourself. And five, your mind is for having ideas, not for holding them. The Getting Things Done Summary A basic truism Alan has discovered over the decades of coaching and training thousands of people is that most stress people experience comes from inappropriately managed commitments they make or accept. Anything that does not belong where it is the way it is, is an open loop, which will be pulling on your attention if it's not appropriately managed. You must use your mind to get things off your mind. Most often, the reason something is on your mind is that you want it to be different than it currently is. And yet, you haven't clarified exactly what the intended outcome is. You haven't decided what the very next physical step is. And or, you haven't put reminders on the outcome and the action required in a system you trust. Until your thoughts have been clarified and decisions have been made, and the resulting data has been stored in a system that you absolutely know you will access and think about when you need to, your brain can't give up the job. It's a waste of time and energy to keep thinking about something that you make no progress on. We need to transform all the stuff we attract and accumulate into a clear inventory of meaningful actions, projects, and usable information. Getting things done requires two basic components. Number one, outcome. Defining what done means. And two, action. What doing looks like. You need to control commitments, projects, and actions in two ways. One, horizontally. Maintaining cohesion across all activities in which you are involved. And two, vertically. Managing thinking, development, and coordination of individual topics and projects. The goal for managing horizontally and vertically is the same, to get things off your mind and get them done. There is usually an inverse relationship between how much something is on your mind and how much it's getting done. There is no reason to ever have the same thought twice, unless you like having that thought. The five steps of mastering workflow. One, capture. Collect what has your attention. Two, clarify. Process what it means. Three, organize. Put it where it belongs. And four, reflect. Review it frequently. And five, engage. Simply do. The three requirements to make the capturing phase work. One, every open loop must be in a capture system and out of your head. Two, you must have as few capturing buckets as you can get by with. And three, you must empty them regularly. Getting things done workflow chart. Stuff. In basket, what it is, is it actionable? No. Then put it in, either put it in the trash, put it in the someday maybe, 
or reference? If it's yes, what's the next action? If it's projects or project plans, or what will it, will it take less than two minutes? If it's yes, do it. If it will take longer than two minutes, and it's no, delegate it or defer it. Either waiting, calendar, or next actions. When you are processing an item, ask yourself, what is it? And is it actionable? If it is not actionable, there are three possibilities. One, trash. It's no longer needed. Two, incubate. No action is needed now, but something might need to be done later. And three, reference. The item is potentially useful information that might be needed for something later. If it is actionable, you have three options. One, do it. If an action will take less than two minutes, it should be done at the moment it is defined. Two, delegate it. If the action will take longer than two minutes, ask yourself, am I the right person to do this? If the answer is no, delegate it to the appropriate entity. And three, defer it. If the action will take longer than two minutes and you are the right person to do it, you will have to defer acting on it until later and track it on one or more next action list. Being organized means simply that where something it matches what it means to you. Alan defines a project as any desired result that can be accomplished within a year that requires more than one action step. Reminders of actions you need to take fall into two categories. One, those about things that have just happened on a specific day or time. And two, those about things that just need to get done as soon as possible. There are three things that could go on your calendar. One, time-specific actions. This is a fancy name for appointments. And two, day-specific actions. These are things that you need to do sometimes on a certain day, but not necessarily a specific time. And three, day-specific information. The calendar is also the place to keep track of the things you want to know about on a specific days. Not necessarily actions you'll have to take, but rather information that may be useful on a certain date. It's useful to have a calendar on which you can note both time-specific and day-specific actions. Next action list, which, along with the calendar, are at the heart of daily action management, organization, and orientation. No action systems fall into three categories. One, trash. This is self-evident. Two, incubation. These are things that require no immediate action but are worth keeping. There are two kinds of incubation tools. Number one, someday maybe list. And two, a tickler system. Someday maybe items are the nature of the projects I might want to do, but not now. But I'd like to be reminded of them regularly. A tickler system is for items that you don't want or need to be reminded of until some designated time in the future. And number three, reference. Reference systems generally take two forms. One, topic and area-specific storage. And two, general reference files. This typically usually define themselves in the terms of how they are stored. The second type of reference system is one that everyone needs close at hand for storing ad hoc information that doesn't belong in some pre-designed larger category. All your projects, active project plans, and next actions, agendas, waiting for, and even someday maybe list should be reviewed once a week. The weekly review is the time to gather and process all your stuff, review your systems, update your list, get clean, clear, current, and complete. Alan believes that you have to use your mind to get things off your mind. The four criteria model for choosing actions in the moment. Context, time available, energy available, and priority. The threefold model for identifying daily work. When you're getting things done or working in the universal sense, there are three different kinds of activities you can be engaged in. Number one, doing predefined work. When you're doing predefined work, you're doing work from your next action list and calendar, completing tasks that you have previously determined need to be done, or managing your workflow. Two, doing work as it shows up. Every day brings some surprises you'll need to expand some time and energy on, many of them. However, when you follow these leads, you're deciding by default that these things are more important than anything else you have to do at those times. And three, defining your work. Defining your work entails clearing up your in-tray, 
your digital messages, and your meeting notes, and breaking down new projects into actionable steps. The sixth level model for reviewing your own work. Number one, Horizon 5. Purpose and principles. Vision. Goals. Areas of focus and accountabilities. And current projects. Number one, ground. Current actions. This is the accumulated list of all the actions you need to take. Number two, Horizon 1, your current projects. There are the relatively short-term outcomes you want to achieve, e.g. organizing a sales conference. Horizon 2, areas of focus and accountabilities. These are key areas of your life and work within which you want to achieve results and maintain standards. Horizon 3 are goals. These are the things you'd like to accomplish or have in a place which could add importance to certain aspects of your life and diminish others. Horizon 4, vision. What do you want your life and your work to look like in three to five years? Decisions at this altitude can easily change what your work might look like on many levels. Horizon 5, purpose and principles. This is the big picture view. The key ingredients of relaxed control are 1. Clearly defined outcomes, projects, and the next actions required to move them towards closure. And two, reminders placed in a trusted system that is reviewed regularly. If you're waiting to have a good idea before you have any ideas, you won't have many. Often the only way to make a hard decision is to come back to the purpose of what you're doing. If you're not sure why you're doing something, you can never do enough of it. One of the most powerful life skills and one of the most important to hone and develop for both professional and personal success is creating clear outcomes. If a project is still in your mind, there's more thinking required. The big secret to efficient, creative and productive thinking and action is to put the right things into focus at the right times. One of the best tricks for enhancing your productivity is having organizing tools you love to use. Until you've captured everything that has your attention, some part of you will still not totally trust that you're working with the whole picture of your world. You can only feel good about what you're not doing when you know everything you're not doing. Here are the four categories of things that can remain where they are, the way they are, with no action tied to them. Supplies, reference material, decoration, and equipment. Processing guidelines. Process the top item first. Process one item at a time. Never put anything back into in. The in tray is a processing station, not a storage bin. There will be three types of items in it. Trash, items to incubate, and reference material. It's fine to decide not to decide about something. You just need a decide not to decide system to get it off your mind. There are seven primary types of things that you'll want to keep track of and manage from an organizational and operational perspective. A projects list. Project support material. Calendar actions and information. Next action list. A waiting for list. Reference material. And a someday maybe list. The primary reason for organizing is to reduce cognitive load i.e. to eliminate the need to consistently be thinking. What do I need to do about this? Checklists can be highly useful to let you know what you don't need to be concerned about. Alan on the weekly review. It is whatever you need to do to get your head empty again and get orientated for the next couple of weeks. It's going through the steps of workflow management, capturing, clarifying, organizing, and reviewing all your outstanding commitments intentions and inclinations until you can honestly say i absolutely know right now everything i'm not doing but could be doing if i decide to your best thoughts about work won't happen while you're at work the world itself is never overwhelmed or confused only we are due to how we are engaged with it alan recommends to always keep an inventory of things that need to be done that require very little mental or creative horsepower. One of the best ways to increase your energy is to close some of your loops. 
It is impossible to feel good about your choices unless you are clear about what your work really is. There are no interruptions. There are only mismanaged inputs. Do unexpected work as it shows up. Not because it is the path of least resistance, but because it is the thing you need to do, vice versa, all the rest. Handle what has your attention and you'll discover what really has your attention. Alan believes the most important thing to deal with is whatever is most on your mind. If you're not totally sure what your job is, it will always feel overwhelming. When you're not sure where you're going or what's really important to you, you'll never know enough. There are two types of projects, however, that deserve at least some sort of planning activity. Number one, those that still have your attention even after you've determined their next actions. And two, those about which potentially useful ideas and supportive detail just show up ad hoc. One of the greatest blocks to organization all and family productivity is the lack of someone about the need for a meeting and with whom to move something forward. The sense of anxiety and guilt doesn't come from having too much to do. It's the automatic result of breaking agreements with yourself. Negative feelings are simply the result of breaking those agreements. They're the symptoms of the disintegrated self-trust. Maintaining an objective and complete inventory of your work, regularly reviewed, makes it much easier to say no with integrity. When a culture adopts what's the next action as a standard operating query, there's an increase in energy, productivity, clarity, and focus. Defining what real doing looks like on the most basic level and organizing placeholder reminders that we can trust are the master keys to productivity enhancement and creating a relaxed inner environment. Without a next action, there remains a potentially infinite gap between current reality need to do. Avoiding action decisions until the pressure of the last minute creates huge inefficiencies and unnecessary stress. Defining specific projects and next actions that address real quality of life issues is productivity at its best. Your mind is for having ideas, not for holding them. You can only put your conscious attention on one thing at a time. Providing yourself the right cues which you will notice at the right time about the right things is the core practice of stress-free productivity. And that's a wrap on Book 95, Getting Things Done by David Allen. Subscribe to our channel for future video book summaries and follow us on Instagram, hashtag bestbookbits. This summary is from the website samuelthomasdavis.com. Watch previous video book summaries on our channel. And if you like the video and want to purchase the book, click the link in the description to purchase from Amazon. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned a thing or two. Hope you have a great day.